so gratefully humbled at, at being the fire chief of the Cincinnati Fire Department. Um, it's something that I do not take lightly, very proud of. Just as you will hold me accountable, I'll hold the department accountable, and they will hold me accountable. From WLWT, this is Let's Talk Cincy, presented by Western and Southern Financial Group. Put our financial strength behind you. Hello everyone, I'm Curtis Fuller and welcome to Let's Talk Cincy. Today, a one-on-one -on -one with Cincinnati's new fire chief. Frank McKinley comes to Cincinnati with a very impressive resume to lead the nation's first professional and fully paid fire department. He's tasked with cleaning up the department's culture after the city manager fired his predecessor. After a six month nationwide search, McKinley was chosen out of more than three dozen applicants. In selecting Chief McKinley, the city manager said, the community and this department are ready for a fresh start and a new voice of leadership. And that I will faithfully discharge. My duties as a fire chief. My duties as a fire chief. Of the Cincinnati Fire Department. Of the Cincinnati Fire Department. And with that, a new era begins in the long history of Cincinnati's fire department. Frank McKinley, sworn in as the department's 19th fire chief. It was fitting that this ceremony happened in the fire museum, a place that preserves the legacy of the first full-time professional fire department in the nation. And it's clear McKinley understands and is grateful to be a part of that tradition. Wow. <laughs> Uh, I'm so gratefully humbled at, at being the fire chief of the Cincinnati Fire Department. Um, it's something that I do not take lightly, very proud of. McKinley was chosen by the city manager. She says she was impressed by his calm and stable demeanor. We hold this department to very high standards, and in turn, it is necessary for the leader of the department to have the same expectations of themselves. McKinley's sister said their family has a legacy in firefighting as well that goes all the way back to their great-great-grandfather from Biloxi, Mississippi. Frank knew when he was in middle school that he wanted a career in fire service. It's not necessarily what we do. It's how we do it. Maintaining the dignity of civilians and, and patients and customers when we come in contact to the public. It's very important and it's something that I, I, I hold in high regards. And we welcome Chief Frank McKinley to Cincinnati and thanks for joining us here on Let's Talk Cincy. Uh, I, I start with your sister saying that you wanted to go into firefighting in middle school. Talk a little bit about that because I know there's a great legacy in your family. Uh, yes, one of the uh, most influential uh, members of my family is one, one of my older brothers, and he was in the fire service. He began in 1981 with the Dallas Fire Department, and having the opportunity to visit him and to uh, visit some of the uh, fire stations at the time really impressed me, and uh, to be a, a community work in the community and be able to uh, deliver services to the public uh, really stood out to me and it was something that I was very passionate about and early on it was something that I knew that I wanted to do. But it goes deeper than that. Yes. Great yes. great grandfather, Biloxi, Mississippi. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And um, I actually found out about that after I was already in the fire service. And so it, it, it kind of uh, really stood out to me that this has been in our family history for a very long time. And so I'm very glad to be a part of uh, public safety. Cincinnati has a great reputation for its uh, fire department. You come from Dallas, uh, you were there almost 30 years, much larger department. Talk about uh, the differences between a Dallas and then coming to a Cincinnati. Um, Believe it or not, there are several similarities, uh, some of the uh, uh, ways that we function, some of the programs that we have, uh, the communication systems, our, our CAD systems are similar, uh, Central Square is a, a CAD system that we use, and so a lot of the interfaces and nuances in how we do business are very similar. Some of the EMS systems and the service that are uh, provided in Dallas versus Cincinnati are, are somewhat different, but uh, they both function with the same concept, and so uh, while they there, it, it is a, a much busier probably in Dallas. It, it's still uh, a real important service, especially when we talk about EMS that we deliver to the public. And so we are evaluating how we deliver our, those services and making, making sure that we can do it in a, a, the most efficient way. So that's extremely important to the department. 
I was asking you, had you ever been to Cincinnati before you came up here uh, uh, back in September? And you said, no, not really. I, I, I had never been to Cincinnati when I first moved here. Um, and when you get off the plane in northern right. Kentucky, yeah, right. that's a jolt. Huh? Right, right. I, I, I thought it was hilarious. And I said, here I go, getting off to a bad start. I got on the wrong plane. Uh, but again, I was pleasantly surprised uh, coming into Cincinnati. Uh, it's just so picturesque and it's beautiful. The landscape, the topography, the hills. Uh, I was very impressed and uh, the culture here in Cincinnati. Uh, everyone's friendly. They speak. And they're, they're very outgoing. And so, and so I, I really, really appreciated that aspect of it. And, and everyone's making me feel really at home. Well, that's good. That's good. Um, going back to the Dallas Department, you had a, a huge budget there, probably half of that budget for a Cincinnati, um, give or take. Um, I, I would imagine that comes with its challenges uh, when you're faced with so many needs in a, a fire department. You know, you order, people might not realize that you order a fire truck and it doesn't get here tomorrow. It takes a couple of years for that to come. So you're uh, you're faced with a, a lot of challenges just with equipment and things of that nature. Right. And, um, and so that's what we're doing as a team. I, I have a, a very outstanding command staff and we have these discussions realizing that we have to do a good job of projecting our needs for the next two to three years. You know, we're looking at 24 to 36 months and being able to get in uh, fire trucks and fire engines and things of that nature. And so it's important for us to be able to forecast and project our needs in two to three years. And so uh, we look at opportunities to, to be comprehensive, uh, um, leveraging some different options to, to make sure that we can get the highest quality equipment so we can provide these services to the citizens. We're going to take a break and we're going to talk a little bit. I know that you've been out and about in the community talking with people. You said you wanted to really listen to what folks in the department, outside the uh, department, have to say. We'll talk a little bit more in just a moment. I want a collaborator, right? And so for me, out of everyone, and we had, we had, I think it was maybe 12 applicants that we had, he just really had a steady hand and had a, um, a disposition to where he just really wanted to lean in and take this organization under his wings and really support it. Welcome back uh, with me is Fire Chief Frank McKinley. Uh, we are just talking, this is his First chance we had a chance to just sit down. Let me read you something that I, I saw that was on your application. It says, I have earned the reputation of one who delivers impactful data-driven outcomes with cultivating relationships with colleagues and constituents. You said you wanted to listen uh, the first 30 days or so to folks inside the department and outside the department. How is that? gone so far? Um, outstanding, outstanding. It's been tremendously outstanding to get out to the firehouses and to talk to the firefighters and to understand the needs and the desires, the wants, and, and what really makes the fire department run. And it's real important to listen to those because as we sit back and we make our strategic action plan, uh, we have to take those things into account. And again, you've probably heard me say a lot of times it's not what we do is how we do what we do. And so uh, having that opportunity to listen and understand what's important to our members is very important. Uh, and also external stakeholders having an opportunity to meet with uh, Chief TG, the uh, police chief, mm -hmm. and understanding uh, the different things that uh, impact the police department and how we can be more collaborative on some of the things that we do, you know, particularly training and understanding our response models and things that we could do to improve efficiency and really help the citizens uh, of, of Cincinnati be safer. Yeah, you, you talked about the chief. She has a similar background, a lot of family members in the police department as you have in the fire department. Yeah, at your swearing in, you talked about safety, uh, concern not only uh, for uh, the citizens, but also safety of your your members in the department. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, yes, and, and it's extremely important. And uh, we all know that the uh, number one cause of a firefighter death is cancer. 
And so we want to make sure when we look at different aspects of uh, how we do our business that we, we're safe, that we keep those things in mind, our respiratory protection and how we uh, do that on emergency scenes. Also, uh, just living styles and what we do around the station, uh, making sure that we're able to take these things into account and be much safer, uh, physical wellness and making sure that we stay in shape, we do a good job, we're prepared to do our jobs. Um, as you know, we can get calls in the middle of the night, wake up from a dead sleep and be on a roof in, in a matter of minutes. And so uh, that has an impact. And so we want to, you know, keep these things in mind, make sure that we're doing a good job of monitoring the health of our members. And, um, and it's one of the most important aspects, too, is, is the mental health. And so we have a peer support group that we're expanding, uh, that we're, we're investing in, and it's, it's very important that we do that because uh, they, they help our members process some of these challenging times, and it's very important that we do that. And so when we say safety and life safety, these things are very important to make sure that we can maintain uh, our members so they can provide the service to the citizens. I'm certain you know these numbers better than, than most. Uh, the general public might not know. Uh, you know, sadly, when you look, you talk mental health, when you look across the nation at some of the challenges uh, first responders face, not just firefighters, first responders, and, and sadly, you know, m m many uh, find themselves uh, with alcoholism, drug problems, um, sadly, suicide. I mean, those are realities for all first responders. So when you talk about mental health, that's that's uh, so important. It is. Um, some of the things that our members see are very tragic. Uh, we, we make, we respond to most people's worst day. And so um, to process that and how we see that, to, to go back and be with our families and try to live our normal lives after experiencing, you know, some of the trauma and tragedy that we see out here, uh, we, we need to make sure that our members have a way of processing that information and uh, not, not uh, resort to some of these uh, other negative uh, uh, processes to try to get by. And so we want to make sure that we evaluate that. A lot of times what, what you hear in the fire services, uh, what we do when we go on the scene, we try to size up a situation. We try to understand the situation. And now we shift that focus to our members. So we need to size up our members and make sure that we can evaluate, that we can, we can see things, we can uh, talk to them. And to have the support mechanism is, is just that's not the complete package. It's making sure that we can move them toward those support mechanisms. And we have to guide them and encourage them to uh, use these resources because this is what's really important. And so uh, merely just having systems and having things for our members is, is not enough. We need to take that additional step. We need to make sure that we can uh, put that into action and get them to those resources that they need. All right, sounds good. We're going to take another break, and we'll be back with the chief in just a moment. I was really intentional with this interview process. We made sure that we had, we opened up, usually in an interview, you want people to do the research on their own, right? but I wanted to see how people's brains work. And one thing about um, Chief McKinley, the incoming Chief McKinley, is that first of all, he was cool, calm, and collect. <laughs> cool, calm, and collect. <laughs> hey, um, I mentioned at the top of the show, obviously you're, you, she talked about doing your homework, so you know the challenges that the department has, recent challenges that the department has faced. I know you can't discuss those, but you, you, you've, you've made a point at saying, uh, women in the department need a voice, um, trying to increase those numbers in the department. Just talk a little bit about the culture of the department. You talked about accountability, how you want to address that accountability, and in reverse, they'll be holding you accountable. All right, and, and I believe that there's their power in words, their, their power um, in being, having a seat at the table, and these things are important. And uh, the first 30 days, one of the things that I've done is uh, I've, I've met with a, a lot of the employee work group organizations, uh, uh, Local 48, the, the union. I've also met with ERG, which is a, a women's work group, and uh, I met with CAFA, the, the Cincinnati's African American Firefighter Association. And it's real important to listen um, 
and, and, and listen to the voices and, and understand the things that impact uh, individuals. And so uh, being able to uh, look at it from a granular level, everybody doesn't have the same needs. And so making sure that, that you can hear it clearly, making sure that we could provide the resources, making sure that you can understand the culture, then you can analyze all the information and come up with the best processes. But you, it has to be a continuous circle to where um, you, you get feedback. Because again, we can go out and create a lot of plans, but how do we know if those plans are effective? And uh, uh, when it comes to women in the fire service, uh, that's very important. And, and, and simple things like people saying firemen, mm, you know, we're yeah. firefighters, and, right, and right. I like to hear that, or manpower, you know, personnel. Uh, just changing, you know, small things to make, make sure that everybody feels welcome. Um, uh, one of the things that are, is very important to me is making sure that everybody has that opportunity to be their unique selves. And uh, I don't think that uh, people have to necessarily assimilate to, to what they think, you know, firefighters are. I think that you should be able to be your unique self. And that's what uh, makes that work environment more pleasurable and make, make people look forward to come, and, come to work and, and do a good job. So. Uh, that's that's what this listening and learning tour is about is to be be able to break break it down to a very granular level you know uh, um, Cincinnati can be a tough crowd at times <laughs> 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 they, uh, folks won't bite their tongue uh, beyond asking you whether you're a, a, a Cowboys fan or are you now a Bengals fan they'll ask you that eventually but uh, I would imagine that you've been challenged by some folks to you know what you're going to do. I mean, they, they they won't hesitate in coming forward and and expressing what their concerns are, and finding out what what you're going to do as well. Huh? Oh well, yes. Foundationally, uh, there are things that I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure we ensure safety. That's one of the things that I've, I've discussed. Uh, also, customer service and mm -hmm. um, yeah. kind of to break customer service down into two different facets. Uh, there's internal customer service. We have uniform and non-uniform mem members of the department and uh, everybody can't be the race car driver and so you have to pull into the pit, you gotta get your tires changed, you gotta get fuel, you have to do these different things and so it, it's one mission, one team um, and I want that concept to, to be uh, uh, hold, hold, held closely because that's very important and so when we talk about external customer service, making sure we're professional when we go out and we can come into contact with uh, patients or customers or just citizens asking questions and so I want to make sure that uh, customer service is always in place and again all of it ties back to equity and inclusion mm -hmm. you know making sure uh, that you know we, we dedicate the resources equitably and how we respond that is done equitably and is driven by data and we want to make sure we're fair and that's internally and externally. Yeah I know you have about um, 800 plus firefighters I think and uh, a, a recruit class right in line now. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that as we uh, come to our final segment. Uh, Chief Frank McKinley, back in a moment. Welcome back, everyone. It's a pleasure that we've been talking to Cincinnati's new fire chief, Frank McKinley, uh, just been on the job about uh, a month, less than a month, actually. Um, th this past Friday, you had uh, a recruit class, class 121, about 53 recruits. So that's encouraging as you get started because you always will need more people on, on board. Well, right. And so... Uh Cincinnati Fire Department, we're very selective in the candidates that we bring in uh, to the family and it's important and we want to make sure that uh, they're properly trained and they have those abilities to deliver the service and to be professional to the public and so I'm extremely proud uh, of, of those young men and women and uh, as they prepare to go out and provide uh, the service to the citizens and so it's, it's very, very exciting time for them as well and we want to make sure that we continue to stay in contact with them and make sure that they um, that we uh, find different ways where we can continue to support them and continue to uh, advance them in their training and knowledge of the fire service. Mm -hmm. I, I state the obvious, it is a tough job. You know, when you see firefighters out there, it is a tough, tough job. But a rewarding one, obviously you've been in it for, yep. for so many years. Uh, talk about that a little bit. Uh, it's, it's very uh, rewarding. It's, it's a, it's a, 
profession that's filled with pride and, and respect and uh, as we you know go out into the community we love to wear you know our shirts our, our hats and things that represent the department and so um, and that's one of the things that we continue to uh, communicate to our, our rookies when they're in training uh, you represent something much bigger than yourself so when you're out in, in the community they look at you as a Cincinnati firefighter mm -hmm. and so you're held to a different standard uh, uh, whether we like it or not but we have to understand that and the way that we conduct ourselves on and off duty is a reflection on the de department and so it, it, it's very fun to uh, you know tell our friends especially when you go back um, home or go to class reunions what do you do for a living hey I'm a firefighter and and it is it, very respected uh, profession and so there's a lot of honor that goes into that and I, I would imagine I, I know you get a chance to interact with with young people in this profession I would imagine when you see a young person who reminds you of yourself <laughs> when you were in middle school, uh, and they look at you as this hero, uh, and they might say to you, I want to I wanna do that one day. I, I would imagine that, that does something to you. Well, you know, I, I spoke about, you know, being a, a young boy growing up in Biloxi, Mississippi, which uh, is one of those things that I would have never imagined in a million years that I would be the fire chief of a, such a well-respected uh, city, a department. And so um, it's very humbling when you look back at, at the 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 pathway that led here. And so, you know, it, it's real encouraging. And so when I do have those opportunities to speak to young men and women, uh, I encourage them. And, I, you know, if you, you work hard, you treat people right, uh, you know, great things happen. And so I, I really, really think that uh, I've had several opportunities to go to schools and talk to students. and. Um, I kind of laugh when I see the one that's uh, disruptive in the back of class because that reminds me of myself. And so it's very humbling, and I, I just want to continue to encourage. I, I want to continue to visit these schools, talk to the kids, and it, it's very important. Um, I just yesterday evening went out to a, a drive right event that was at uh, Paycor Stadium, and uh, just being in these young men and young women's life is extremely important and I, I want to be an ambassador for the city and the department so these things are very important to me. Well welcome again to Cincinnati and thank you for uh, being a part of this program it's uh, great to have you here we wish you the best of luck and and you're always welcome back. Thank you so much. All right well that's all the time we have for today thanks for joining us I'll see you next time for another edition of Let's Talk Sensei.